surgery, sir. Very carefully. Okay, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Today, my topic is on daycare surgery anesthesia. Daycare surgery, also known as amplitude surgery or same day, same day surgery or outpatient surgery, according to International Association of Amplitude Surgery, it is defined as a surgery or procedure for which the patient gets admitted and discharged on the same working day. Previously, daycare surgery was done in patients undergoing minor procedures. Now, due to the development of new surgical techniques and shorter acting anesthetics, Wide range of patient and complex surgeries are being performed in daycare surgery. Mostly elective procedures are performed in daycare surgery. Some of the common uh, daycare surgery we usually see are in orthopedics, we see implant removal, closed direction, arthroscopy, in ophthal, cataract surgery, quince, quince surgery, examination and anesthesia, lacrimal duct, uh, duct probing. In plastic, we see skin uh, excision of the skin lesions, scar revision. In general surgery, we see hernia repair, lymph node excision. In ENT, a tonsillectomy, grommet insertion, polypectomy, and extraction of tooth, we see. Uh, in gynecology, we see DNC, hysteroscopy, polypectomy, uh, lap sterilization, that is tubal ligation. And neurology, we see circumcision, uh, cystoscopic. These are the usually commonly seen uh, daycare surgeries. The advantages of daycare surgery is it has uh, it is cost effective and there is low recommend of nursing and medical supervision shorter surgical waiting list that is greater flexibility of scheduling uh, surgeries reduced difference in the availability of blood greater turnover of the patient and minimal psychological disturbance especially in children and elderly there is lesser incidence of hospital acquiring infection respiratory complication and venous thromboembolisms uh, the patient selection for uh, daycare surgery was three factors, social, medical, and surgical factors. Social factors, the patient should understand the procedure and consent should be given. If the procedure is being done under general anesthesia, the patient should be looked after by a responsible adult for 24 hours. That should be appropriate home circumstances for post-operative care. And that should be easy access for medical facilities within one hour. For post op complication, a telephone should be readily available. They should follow post op instruction like refraining from driving, operating heavy machineries, and making decisions during the recovery period. Medical factors involve uh, ASA 1, 2, and 3, that is stable illness that are better managed at home. These uh, patients are usually uh, taken for daycare surgery. Unstable medical conditions, these patients are not suitable for daycare surgeries. Special consideration are given for infants, obese, child, elderly patient, and emergent surgery like for abscess patient, etc. Surgical factors, when there is a risk of when there is a risk of uh, like no major risk involving the major surgical complication, minimal risk of post-op hemorrhage and respiratory compromise. Uh, the patient is able to uh, rapidly return to this normal function and equal, able, able to drink an adequate food intake, should be able to mobilize before discharge. There should be control of pain with oral medication with or with uh, local anesthetics. Uh, minimally invasive surgery techniques should be employed if the abdomen is open or thoracic cavity is opened. The contraindications of daycare surgery involves serious life-threatening disease, morbid obese patient, with respiratory compromise, chronically using central uh, acting drugs, lack of uh, responsible adult at home to take care of the patient post-operatively, and surgical procedure involving ma major fluid shifts, significant blood loss, significant post-op pain, and post-op nausea and vomiting. The pre of evolution of take care surgery should be performed one to two days prior. It involves detailed history with special focus on comorbidities, identifying difficult airway, monitoring the vitals, pre-op counseling to allay the fear and anxiety, uh, pre-medications, management of chronic medications, written and verbal communication regarding the arrival time and fasting guidelines, and need a responsible adult to accompany the patients. Usually, investigations are not done in less than 40 years of age. In patients with 40 to 65 years of age, ECG and hematocrit uh, may, can be done. In more than 65 years of age, ECG, urea, creat, glucose, and 
blood urea uh, like uh, hemoglobin can be done and in more than 75 years chest x-ray ecg urea creat glucose is done anesthesia for day care surgery the goals involves uh, that should be smooth onset of action adequate intraop analgesia and amnesia good surgical condition rapid recovery and minimal adverse side effects type of anesthesia will be influenced by the surgical requirements patient consideration patient consideration and experience of the anesthetist uh, it includes uh, general anesthesia regional anesthesia local anesthetic or sedations or combination of these general anesthesia is most commonly preferred because it uh, uh, central neuroxylate blockade is not recommended due to the persistent motor blockade which delays the discharge uh, low spinal is if needed low spinal is recommended short acting drugs like lignocaine pilocaine is desirable for central neuroxylate blockade bupropion is used if the duration of surgery is more than 2 hours ideally uh, the choice of agents for general anesthesia induction agents used in general anesthesia should ensure the smoother induction and good immediate recovery and rapid it into the normal state propofol is most commonly used it, uh, it has a rapid recovery and decrease incidence of post op nausea and vomiting ketamine has a high incidence so it is not recommend high incidence of post op nausea and vomiting so it is not recommend thiopentone uh, in after thiopentone usage that is a uh, impairment of the fine motor skills and the hangovers like sensation post surgery so it is not recommend analgesics like short acting opioids like fentanyl alfentanyl sufentanyl remifentanyl are used maintenance can be done along with nitrous and sevo desflurane uh, uh, but there is a high incidence of post op nausea and vomiting compared to propofol uh, sevoflurane is an inhalational induction of choice in both children in children it as it is a not non irritant and there is a rapid induction muscle relaxants most commonly used are saxa atrac and mevacurium saxa curin because of the short duration of action and their reversible availability targeted control infusion of propofol without without acting uh, like short, uh, ultra rapid acting opioids have been used because of the minimal risk of post op nausea and vomiting and short recovery time recovery following anesthesia early recovery includes the time during which the patient emerge from anesthesia recover and control of their recover control of their productive reflex and resume the early motor activity intermediate recovery begins from the recovery room that is they are able to amply drink foods void and prepare for discharge late recovery includes when the patient is being discharged from home and continues until the complete uh, function like physiological and psychological function is recovered criteria for discharge the patient mental status should be clear that is they should be alert oriented and the vitals should be hemodynamically stable scoring system used to document fitness for discharge are modified altered scoring system which includes activity re respiration bp consciousness and oxygen saturation and the another scoring system is post anesthesia discharge scoring system which involves vital sign activity nausea and vomiting pain which is controlled with oral analgesia or surgical bleeding if a score they are given a score of 0 1 2 if a score is more than 9 they are uh, uh, they can be discharged for central neuroxylate blockade safe ambulation is necessary before ambulation the return of normal sensation muscle strength and proprioception should be uh, checked normal that should be normal perianal sensation they should be able to plant or flex the toes and proprioception of big toes should be uh, seen it is advisable to void before discharge prior to being discharged patient needs to be given clear information regarding the regarding uh, what to expect after surgery and what to be consumed during uh, consumed after surgery the barriers to day care surgery according to who uh, who uh, world health organization there are seven barriers to delivering day care surgery first is economical barrier that is the financial incentives for either the hospital or the surgeon associated with inpatient stays and national legislations may block the shift towards the day care surgery educational medical students and doctors may not be trained in benefits of day care surgery or may, or may lack motivation to drive change uh, facility design 
health facilities may not be structured to favor the development of daycare surgery, local community and uh, home support, there may be lack of adequate community services to support change. Information, patient and healthcare providers may not be aware of the daycare surgery as an option. Organizational, effective daycare surgery requires strong multidisciplinarity. Working this may be difficult to achieve. Um, uh, staffing facilities and management in daycare surgery. There should be a self-contained unit separate from the patient's uh, inpatient facilities with good transport options nearby. Staffs, staff nurse, operation department practitioner, physician assistants, and other staff are the key to success for any daycare enterprise. There should be a separate area for children with toys and nurse filled with pediatric care. The unit should be open late enough to allow the patients at the end of operation it is sufficient time to recover and to be discharged. It is recommended that the surgeons and anesthetists are senior clinician to promote the forward flow and minimize admission rates and post-op complications. Post-op nausea and vomiting is the most common usual cause for admission, unplanned admission following daycare surgery. Patient at risk of post-op nausea and vomiting should be given two to three prophylactic antiemetics and minimize uh, antiemetics. They should minimize the starvation times and that should be routine use of IV fluids to reduce the risk. Conclusion. Developing a successful daycare surgery requires investment in educational programs for staffs as well as removal of any barriers. Shifting elective patient towards daycare surgery may seem to be a daunting challenge, but can result in real benefits in both patient and healthcare services. Thank you, sir. Very good. That was quite a detailed uh, <clears throat> description of daycare anesthesia. But uh, where will this daycare unit be situated? Is there any criteria for that? Are there any attachment to the hospital is necessary or it can be a standalone unit by itself? Can be a standalone unit, sir. It can be. There are four types of daycare procedures. One is called hospital integrated. For example, if you are working in Miot, Miot itself, one block may be completely allotted for daycare procedures where there are no prolonged. In the definition of daycare is patient should get dis admitted and discharged on the same day. Yes, that is the definition of daycare surgery and anesthesia. Maximum stay should be only 23 hours. It should not cross 24 hours. Then it is not anymore called 24 hours. But unfortunately, many of our patients who require daycare anesthesia treatment, they are made to stay for 24 hours because the insurance coverage will happen only if they stay for more than 24 hours. So even for a small uh, watt removal, you have to admit the patient, keep them for 24 hours, and then discharge only the next day because of the to claim for the no cash uh, benefits or the complete uh, reimbursement of your hospital charges by the insurance agent. So that defeats the purpose of a daycare. So for a daycare, patients should be admitted in the morning and discharged before 23 hours completion. Even if you late in the night, you can discharge, but you should discharge them within 24 hours. That is the number one criteria. So for that, it can be this daycare services can be incorporated in a major hospital that is called hospital integrated daycare services or it can be hospital based it need not be completely hospital integrated it can be a hospital based or it can be office based it can be done by the consultant and physician or it can be a standalone unit okay these are the four types of facilities that they have and normally they have a pattern of uh, the designing of the facility okay, where patient will come get admitted there will be a change room for them to go through with a change of street clothes into the ot clothing then they go to the ot get operated and depending upon the surgery for example if it's a cataract surgery they can straight away go back to the waiting area get discharged and go home they need not stay in the post anesthesia recovery or post surgical recovery area. Whereas, if it is a hernia done under spinal, patient from the OT will come to the recovery area. 
once he completely gets back the motor power void that then able to ambulate without any dizziness he will go back to the waiting and get out of the hurry so that is how the planning of the whole thing should be usually done and that is a very important thing that has to be incorporated in this okay so and the patient should be able to reach the hospital and the, after the discharge patient if there is any complication there are three main complications which are uh, inherent to neck surgery one is uncontrolled pain second is post op nausea and vomiting third is unanticipated hemorrhage okay in these conditions patient has to be given clear instructions that he should reach the hospital within one hours time if it is very unbearable or very severe so patients uh, when you register the patient or enroll them for day care surgery you must uh, look into the factors how far away from the hospital the patient is, uh, uh, residence is situated whether he can reach within one hour in case of any complications <clears throat> whether he has got a telephone connection whether he has got an uh, sensible attendant to look after him and then communicate in case there is a problem because many elderly patients who are living here alone and their children living abroad they are the ones when they come for a day care procedure they may have this problem of not able to come back to the hospital in case of a complication in the right time okay so this is also an important point that has to be taken into consideration and uh, in the selection of patient what you said about asa category and obesity there are two extremes neonatal patients coming for a neonatal emergency which are also nowadays done as a day care procedure for example a hernia pregnancy uh, hernia done in a newborn that can be the patient can be discharged the same day but the expertise of the people managing the day care should have enough experience so that uh, a regular anesthetic would be is mostly with adults may be not competent enough to manage a newborn child okay so for that we must have facilities to bring the experience hand or the experience surgeon to come and perform the anesthesia as well as surgery so that facility also will be should be available and that will be available in hospital integrated uh, facilities and not in a stand alone facility so in stand alone you have to in the pre anesthetic uh, evaluation time itself you must plan it such a way that you can call those experts to the stand alone facility and get the surgery done instead of trying with the inexperienced or uh, unexposed to anesthetists and surgeons doing a newborn surgery okay similarly two elderly patients too much older patients they have the problem of post op cognitive difficulties they may have some disorientation they may not uh, recall or uh, behave properly so in such cases you have to do a thorough mental examination to make sure that they don't become violent at home after you discharge and send them home so that there will be a trouble to the attenders they who look after them okay so these are the points that has to be added otherwise your presentation was sufficient for a theory question answer good